1987, the original Transformers toy line underwent a shift in focus. A brand new play pattern was introduced that was at the center of that year's range of figures, Headmasters. This play feature would continue into 1988, inspire several spin-offs, and will go on to be revisited multiple times throughout Transformers history, most prominently in the Titans Return toy line of the last year. Just in time for the Titans Return cartoon, let's dig into the basics. Headmaster Transformer toys are so named for their removable heads, which transform into separate, smaller action figures that serve as pilots for the Transformers alternate mode. The original 80s figures featured meters in their chests activated by attaching the head, which displayed the Transformers' unique strength, speed, and intelligence. But this feature hasn't survived into most modern Headmaster toys. Depending on the story they appear in, the smaller figures are depicted as either tiny robots or organic beings in armor. But the precise nature of their partnership with the larger Transformer whose head they form differs greatly depending on what story you're reading or watching. You see, from its very introduction in 1987, the specifics of Headmaster technology have been handled in two significantly different ways, with Hasbro in the West and Takara in Japan each taking their own unique approach to the idea of robots with removable transforming heads. In Hasbro's vision for the Headmaster concept, a Transformer forms a symbiotic bond with another, smaller life form who becomes their head and shares a body and mind with them. Hasbro originally depicted these small life forms as the tiny aliens from the planet Nebulos and told their story in both the Marvel comic book and the Generation 1 animated series. The comic introduced the Headmasters in a dedicated four-issue miniseries, which followed a group of Autobots led by the pacifist Fortress Maximus as they abandoned Cybertron to escape the Transformers War and settled on Nebulus. Met with distrust from the native Nebulans, small organic humanoids who were basically indistinguishable from human beings, Maximus determined to prove that he was no threat to them by performing a grandiose display in which he tore his own head off, rendering his body inactive. Several of his followers did the same, but unfortunately, this wasn't enough to convince the wicked politician Lord Zarak of their good intentions, and he contacted the Decepticon Scorponok on Cybertron for help in ridding his world of the Autobots. To fight Scorponox invading Decepticons, heroic Nebulan volunteers underwent extreme reconstructive surgery to biomechanically modify their bodies, giving them the ability to transform themselves into the Autobots' heads, connecting to and taking control of their bodies via a process known as binary bonding. To combat these powerful Autobot Nebulan hybrids, Scorponox Decepticons copied the process with Zarak and his evil cohorts, becoming headmasters themselves. The Generation 1 cartoon, meanwhile, introduced Headmasters in its three-part finale, The Rebirth. In this version of the story, a plasma energy accident blasted a ship full of Autobots across the galaxy to Nebulos, which was ruled by Lord Zarak and his evil consortium, The Hive. The Autobots fell in with a group of rebel Nebulans, who in the cartoon were green-skinned, more visibly alien humanoids. And to battle them together, Autobot scientist Brainstorm devised the Headmaster process, converting the Autobots' heads into transformable exosuits the Nebulans wore. As in the comic, when the pursuing Decepticons were defeated by these powerful hybrids, they joined forces with Zarak and the Hive and became Headmasters as well. Now, the cartoon didn't have time to delve too deeply into the ramifications of the Headmaster process, with comment merely being made that Headmaster partners felt as if they were part of each other after undergoing it. The Marvel comic, however, would take time to explore the idea, establishing that it was mental as well as physical. The Headmasters had become two halves of a single being, sharing a mind even while physically separated. Additionally, Nebulans were not the only beings who could become Headmasters in Hasbro's stories either. The Autobots' human ally, Spike with Wiki, became bonded to Fortress Maximus, and his son Daniel partnered with RC. And though comic, cartoon, and most modern media depict the Nebulans as organic life forms, some ancillary media published at the time, including children's storybooks and even the original Headmaster's television commercial, presented them as being small robots instead. Takara's version of Headmaster technology, on the other hand, eschewed the idea of a partnership between life forms. 
The Japanese headmasters involve only one being with one mind. That's the one who forms the head, who connects to and controls a larger body with no life of its own. This take on the headmaster's story was first related in the Japanese exclusive animated series Transformers The Headmasters, which was produced and aired in Japan as a continuation of the American cartoon instead of the rebirth. The story began much the same way as in the Marvel comic. Led by Fortress Maximus, a group of Cybertronians left their homeworld to escape the war. But rather than full-size Transformers, these robots were tiny ones who had not yet mastered the art of transforming. And rather than Nebulos, they crashed on a planet named Master, a dangerous world of hazardous atmospheric conditions that claimed the lives of many of them. To survive, they needed to become bigger and stronger, and so developed Transtectors, lifeless, full-size Transformer bodies that could better endure the hardships of life on the planet. Undergoing a rigorous training process, the little robots learned how to transform into heads, allowing them to connect to the Transtectors as headmasters with a cry of HEAD HEAD BOMB! The Japanese headmasters had various superpowers their American counterparts didn't, including telepathy and playing up a feature of the toys that didn't make it into American media, the ability to share and combine their energy by switching Transtectors with each other. More headmasters were introduced the following year in the next Japanese animated series, Super God Master Force, with one important difference. Rather than Cybertronians, these headmaster juniors were human beings who used Master Force technology created on Planet Master to temporarily alter their bodies so they could transform into heads and control transtectors of their own. In the 30 years since its introduction, Headmaster technology has made periodic reappearances in Transformers toy lines and media, in both American and Japanese forms. A new incarnation of Fortress Maximus appeared in the 2001 Robots in Disguise series, with a robotic partner instead of a human one. Soon after that, the Unicron trilogy gave us characters like Overload and Sideways, whose heads are formed by their robotic minicons, and the giant Omega Supreme. IDW Publishing's comic books have featured headmasters of many types drawn from throughout Transformers lore, including the partnering of large and small Cybertronians, created in ancient times by Nexus Prime and his Enigma of Combination, to the mental fusion of Transformers and biomechanically re-engineered humans, developed by Scorponok and used by the Autobot Sunstreaker and his human friend Hunter Onion, and even re-engineered humans controlling lifeless Transtector-style bodies. Transformers Animated introduced a humorously weaponized version of the technology, created by the human scientist Henry Masterson. Masterson's Headmaster Unit was a small transforming robot piloted by himself, which was able to cut the heads off Transformers and take their place, hijacking complete control of their bodies. The tiny Cybertronian butler Cogman from the most recent live-action movie, The Last Night, was evidently supposed to have a similar ability. The film's toy line depicts him as a headmaster with an Aston Martin transtector, and the toy is also able to interact with the Decepticon Nitro Zeus action figure, taking the place of its regular head, indicating that, at some point in the development of the film, there was going to be a scene in which Cogman seized control of Nitro's decapitated body. But none of these concepts made it into the finished movie, even though Cogman is still called a headmaster on screen. He is a headmaster, very rarely. I do disturb Off the back of headmasters, the suffix master became the go-to label for many subsequent gimmicked play patterns in Transformers, several of which have involved similar concepts of bonding and partnerships. Target masters, in which small beings bond to Transformers as weapons. Power masters, in which nebulans become engines for Transformers to serve as an external power source and unlock their ability to transform. And their Japanese counterpart, God Masters, humans who use the Master Force to become engines and control transtectors. And the upcoming Prime Masters, small robots who convey the power of the original 13 Primes on the Transformers they partner with. But before Prime Masters come the most prominent new type of Masters, a variation on Headmasters known as Titan Masters small, ancient Cybertronians who derive their name from the fact they were created to crew and maintain the giant city spaceship Transformers, the Titans, and who are the central component of the Titans Return toy line. Fittingly enough, Titan Masters have been depicted with as much variation across different media as the Headmasters were back when they were introduced. 
Hasbro's promotional material for the toy line plays up the interchangeability of the figures, presenting Titan Masters as each possessing a unique superpower that they can grant to any Transformer whose head they take the place of, including strength, speed and intelligence boosts, time travel, teleportation, invisibility, and many, many more. In IDW's comic books, on the other hand, the few Titan Masters who have appeared have been shown to function more in the Japanese style, controlling or hijacking larger lifeless bodies rather than partnering and bonding with Transformers. And the concept hasn't been imported by Japan at all, with the local release of the Titan's Return toys treating them as normal Japanese style headmasters. How will the Titan's Return cartoon choose to depict the technology? Well, we don't have long to wait to find out. And those are the basics on Headmasters, one of the most diverse and varied concepts in Transformers. But what's your preference? Single mind, shared mind, robotic, organic? Talk it out in the comments, and don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and visit Patreon to support the show.